promotion of pupils. I am also holding the portfolio of the government chief whip. And in this regard, Madam Speaker, we shall ask the Minister of Education. There is a procedure matter. Madam Speaker, the NRM government may have disintegrated. But when you have senior ministers present, the one of health, public service, works, and others, and then you have a junior minister standing to say now is the boss of everybody, answering on behalf of government. Yes, we may have, the government may have disintegrated because I have seen ministers in Masaka campaigning for Pirao, yet they are ministers of a sitting government. So the procedure issue I am raising, Madam Speaker, is whether you have been notified that the NRM government has completely disintegrated and anyone can be bid of government business, even when the cabinet ministers, if you read the constitution, it makes a distinction between the cabinet ministers and the ministers of state. It's not a show, it's not a ceremony. So, Madam Speaker, have you been notified that the government has disintegrated anyone can be rid of government business and answering on behalf of government? Uh, I have not been notified that is disintegrated, that government is disintegrated, but I have been notified that uh, Honorable Musa Sisi is the acting leader of government business. And the fact that I'd already gotten a letter from uh, the Prime Minister that most of the ministers were going to be out of station. They were going for registration. I think that's why they, they gave him. He, he can give us the answer if, if it really helps the community, really. Madam Speaker, we undertake that the Minister of Education will come at the next sitting of this house and give the status. But, but before we come with the, a statement, can we have an action taken on ground? Because you see these teachers are disgruntled, they don't want now to go to school. Because after marking, maybe all of them have failed. <laughs> Maybe all of them have failed. So what is the way forward? Is it a policy? Is it a policy that has just come? Yes, uh, Haj. Thank you, Rattron Speaker. I wanted to find out from my uh, brother in the area. I know that under decentralization, sometimes at that level, when there is poor performance, in academics, districts usually devise measures of addressing the poor performance. I know that it happens under decentralization. So I wanted to find out um, the clarification. Maybe has the district come up with a policy in that line, or there is nothing and, uh, and uh, somebody just took it upon themselves to begin conducting exams. I, I, I think there is need to be clarity on that. But I am aware that different districts usually devise different measures to address uh, sometimes issues of that nature. But, but members, you need to understand that there are several causes of, of, of why students or children fail. It may be because of the delayed payments, the long distance of teachers from where they stay to school, there is no there is no induction of these teachers the so many things so you will not only associate it with maybe on how the teacher performs as a person you give somebody to do an exam of p7 a person in p1 a person teaching p1 yes uh, alan yes madam chair madam speaker for clarity uh Mr. Kom in 2018 uh, came out to, with such regulations, with such uh, directive, 
and I remember the Minister of Education interjected uh, stopping this uh, arrangement. But uh, recently, this is how they did it. But what we want as per now, the Minister to come in and give it clarity and explain if it is relevant, if it is a policy, if it is under regulation, so that the nation can be guided in that line. Yeah, because if it is a policy, it should cut across the whole country, not a specific district. So the ministry, you need to, one, somebody should go on ground, one of the ministers should go on ground and see whether it is really true. And then an action must be taken. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Minister, for giving me way. Honorable Minister and Right Honorable Speaker, there has been degeneration in this issue of education, Right Honorable Speaker. You find in different districts, different politicians now setting exams and giving children exams in their name. You find the, the person names so and Solomon Silwani examination board. Then they set these exams and they give children. It has happened in my district, Bujiri district local government. They set exams in the name of a person and then they give out exams. And I've seen it. I saw it even party presidents of different political parties set what? Exams. So when the... So, so Silwan, you set it in, in Bujiri? No, no, no. I did not set in Bujiri. I was just using my name as an example because I don't want to mention people who are not here. But they are okay. politicians who set exams. Yes, I, I will come here and lay. I, you, you I, I saw a party president no. setting no, you, exams. No. The, rules, the rules of this house... Uh -uh. The rules of this house, you don't talk about people who are not here. Yes. But if it is true, then you bring the document and lay on the table. Right, I'm much obliged. Because I will come I with the document. Because I have a party president here. <laughs> Right or not, <laughs> to be specific, you're not the president of Gemma, but I will come and lay the document. Please right come now. and lay on the table. Uh, let me have Sasaga, then uh, Katesh. Minister, let the minister listen and he, then he answers. Thank you, Madam, right. Madam Speaker. Yes. Madam Speaker, over time, at, in marking centers, UNEB has continuously come up with different marking guides and uh, collected some of the mistakes which teachers do in teaching. And most of these teachers are not examiners. And that partly explains why most of those schools are not doing well, especially the upcountry schools. And I think whenever they smoke, there must be fire. In the wisdom of this LC5, for him to move and say, I want to subject the teachers to the examination. I think he wanted to prove and assess and see really if that par with what you enable requires. But that means the burden goes back to the Minister of Education. Minister of Education must have retwing programs through the CCT centers. You keep on retwing and retwing and updating some of these teachers of the current desired standard this by, by UNEB, which these teachers don't know about. And I think that's why most of them came up, and many may, may, might come up, many of them, to subject teachers maybe to those examinations. And that goes to the Minister of Education. Madam Speaker, the second issue, as I said for, I have seen the adverts in different media by the higher education students board and good enough the ministers here and in this advert they are calling upon the students who sat senior six and are joining year one in the university to apply for the loan scheme and the way of the fact that you never delay to list the exams and this financing board put the deadline as as 15th of march which is today most of these students have just got received the results others are yet to receive. And these universities have just opened up for the admissions. 
right on level speaker, I was pleading with the minister, while appealing with the minister, if can prevail over the higher students loan scheme, that the deadline can be extended for the most of the students to benefit in this country. Because the way I'm aware, not even a single university by now could have issued the admission letters. But also supplemental to that, there was a complaint in this house last year and the previous years about the equity of their own scheme. And there was that complaint and they could publish in papers. What the board decided or the ministry was now to change. If they were starting with a religious name, sorry, a Christian name of the beneficiaries, they went and turned and changed with the religious name. Because you could actually follow in the papers and see that most of these beneficiaries largely come from one part of this country. Almost 80% of those beneficiaries. I could also call upon the honorable minister that the board ensures equity and fairness. If possible, if you can undergo the quota system the way the public university joint admissions board does. That we go by quota system and we know very well Suronko or Bujili has got this number of of the beneficiaries of their own scheme. Thank I you. submit. Thank, Thank you. you. Minister, we need equity and national character. Katesh? Madam Speaker, if I was the MP of that area, I would actually comment the decision of the LOC5 chairman. And uh, at least you can accuse him of the methods he has used, but he, he has ignited the debate about why our children are performing poorly in schools. I, well, at the beginning of PDM, Madam Speaker, I subjected the parish chiefs and the town agents to a simple test. And I can tell you, I was shocked by the level of understanding of what these people are supposed to do. So, Madam Speaker, I think the Minister of Education, rather than being uh, condemning or us condemning the actions of the LOC5, we need actually to engage him and engage the districts to understand the deep causes of poor performance by these children. Parents world over in this country are sacrificing to take their children to school. Yes, there might be other factors, but our education system, particularly because of the way decentralization has been, the umbilical code between the center and the local government has been cut off. In the old days, we used to have inspectors going into schools, checking uh, attendance. These days, we have a lot of absenteeism. And these are some of the issues that are facing our people. So uh, I would like to encourage my brother that we need to upload the actions of that chairperson and take measures to make sure that we understand the deep root causes of order. this problem. He has already finished. Honorable Minister, can we first hear from you? Because we need this. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker and dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to begin by clarifying over the advert that came from the Higher Education Student Financing Board recently. This, right honorable speaker, this is not meant for the students whose results were released recently, as is being misinterpreted. This advert was, you remember when we were discussing the budget last time, last year for this financial year, no money was provided for, for hire for this, for, this, for this board. And we've been following Minister of Finance, government, to give us a supplementary, which, is, which, I, which you approved. So this advert is targeting that group of people. For the students whose results have just come out, once parliament gives us money, we shall go ahead, make all the necessary preparations, and the advert advert and inform whoever will be concerned. Otherwise, this one is not for this category of the students. Secondly, right honorable speaker, about what is happening in Nakaseke, 
we as a ministry we are shocked to learn about this from from the media and uh, and because we know that uh, Nakase Kereko government is not an an official we have sent our team on the ground to find out exactly what is happening would this be true and right honorable speaker I want to assure this house that after we've done the study, because we'll come back and report to you. I submit your right to honorable speaker. Thank you. Honor, honorable members. Okay. Uh, right honorable speaker, uh, I first of all want to thank the minister for always labeling to explain on behalf of the state minister to explain on behalf of the, of the Minister for Education. Right Honorable Speaker, I remember uh, one time when we asked about the presence of the Minister of Education, you said that you had granted permission for her to attend Parliament on Zoom. But the fact that we have several challenges in the Ministry of Education, don't you think, Right Honorable Speaker, it is procedurally uh, well for you to rescind that decision and, and inquire all and require the Minister for Education, full Minister, to attend plenary such so that we can attend to these issues and mostly the most issue on the floor don't you think right honorable speaker it's procedurally well that this is attended to by the very minister because we are missing attendance in this house and i think that is the very reason as, as to why this ministry is performing very poorly honorable <laughs> namoga i'm not sure whether the, the 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 minister is performing poorly and if it is doing so it's a collective responsibility. It's not for one person. So the, the, the person who has just spoken, Dr. Muingo. I am just reminding you he's a doctor. Dr. Muingo yeah, is a very experienced person. And, and he's an educationist with all, so many schools. And he knows more about education. Unless if you just want to, 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 to have the first lady, it doesn't cost much, but uh, she's even on Zoom. You can come and see. Come. <laughs> she's on Zoom now. Uh, love. Honorable members, as I told you, this is more of a special sitting to receive the ministerial statements. So let's reduce our Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, in uh, your communication, you did um, pass on um, a communication to NRM members of parliament to go and uh, handle their registration. I just want to also inform I, the House. I informed all members from different political parties. Yes, right, Honorable Speaker. Um, I just wanted to appreciate you for that and to emphasize that um, even ourselves in the opposition, we are carrying out different mobilization activities. Um, so it's just a good thing to take note. Right, Honorable Speaker, I do seek your indulgence and um, guidance for that matter. The vision of this parliament, our vision is a transformed, independent, and people-centered parliament. That's our vision as parliament. Our mission is to achieve improved accountability, representation, democracy, and good governance for better quality of life of all you. Honorable Speaker, um, I had made mention of our vision, which is a transformed, independent, and people-centered parliament. Our vision, which is to achieve improved accountability, representation, democracy, and good governance for better quality of life of all Ugandans. That's our vision. That's our mission as a parliament, right, Honorable Speaker. And I want to appreciate you because many times you have um, emphasized that we are a people-centered parliament. Whatever we do, is about the people and should be about the people. Right, Honorable Speaker, in um, the last about three weeks, the people of Uganda 
have been raising several questions about this people-centered parliament. Questions about how we use or even misuse the people's taxpayer money. Questions to do with accountability by this house. Questions to do with recruitment, etc., etc. And the people have been raising these issues on various fora. There has been deafening silence from this institution, right, Honorable Speaker, regarding the issues which are raised by the people. And like we are saying, we are a people-centered parliament. I've seen the spokesperson of parliament a few times on some radio stations and TV stations, confirming some, saying some are partially correct, some saying some of these allegations are exaggerated. But Honorable Speaker, to date, this institution, which is a people-centered parliament, has not come out comprehensively, unequivocally, to explain itself to the people for which we are a people-centered parliament, to account to the people of Uganda. There's um, a procedure matter. Thank you so much, right on our speaker. The procedural matter I'm raising is whether this parliament is right to depend on media reports. Because the law was raising issues which are on media. I thought we have been operating on issues which are officially brought to this house. Therefore, I'm seeking your guidance whether we are going to proceed handling matters on the floor of parliament based on media reports, not issues official brought to the House. Thank you. Honorable members, Serge Kubo, cool down. Cool down. Honorable members, there is a procedure matter that was an issue from law. And uh, Lob is talking about what was on social media. The first time, uh, uh -uh. the first time there was an issue which was brought by Honorable Dur, and I asked Honorable Dur to write to me. I'm still waiting for the letter, and I will respond on what is being raised. Two, we are debating in that, we want to, deba to debate in anticipation. Matters of the media are not, we, we agreed as this house that we should have evidence-based debates. And that's what we are saying bring evidence, lay on table, and after you've laid any evidence on table, then we debate on it. That's number two. Number three, number three, and I need authenticated. Number three, the leader of opposition, Right Honorable Joel Senyoyi, wrote a letter to me on the same issues and asked that we should discuss the issues in the commission. I replied, we will have the commission meeting and we'll discuss those things and come with a solution and report back on the findings of from the commission. We are going to have a commission meeting. Can we have the next item? If you have anything else, if you have anything else, just a minute. Say it first, first sit. If we have anything else, let's first lay the ministerial statements because I want to give ministers, I mean members time to speak. After the ministerial statements, these people are supposed to be away. Let me receive the ministerial statement. Sechi, I thought you would be sitting. Uh -uh. Love. 
love with due respect i am going to give you time to raise all what you want to raise to add all what you've already said i will give you time i will give you time immediately i get because these people are supposed to go and first of all uh, i want to thank you for one thing i want to thank first of all lob for one thing as I report, as I speak, Luboa has started work. They, are, they have started construction. They have started. Now that one I can, I can talk with authority. And that is cut as of lead of opposition. I am going to give you to speak. Let me have the ministerial statement, then, you, then we have this. Yes. Madam Speaker, I want to appreciate um, your ruling. Um, and um, like I was saying, I was just finishing the procedural matter, and then, uh, Madam Speaker, you ruled uh, halfway through. Uh, one, colleagues, a few minutes ago, we were discussing a matter of the Nakase K chairman issuing uh, an exam. It's a media report. So it is okay for this house to discuss media-related issues that are people-centered. No, Honorable Speaker, Honorable, you have guided... Honorable, it is not a media report. It is, re it is reported by the member of parliament of Nakaseke. It and he was there, he came and told me he had interaction with the LOC5. Uh, is that true? Go on record. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for another opportunity. Yeah, I uh, reported what is on ground as area member of parliament and uh, I've been interacting even different teachers that uh, they are being disrespected what is going on but, and that's why I request the, the minister to come in so that I uh, can clarify on this but I was in the, in the, in the constituents so that uh, I got the information uh, and uh, we discussed this Kubo. matter. Th th thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. And um, yes, of course, as leaders, we do interact with several people. The leader of the opposition does the same about several matters, including this one. Right Honorable Speaker, you have guided that um, and informed the House that I did write to you regarding a commission meeting. You wrote back to me, Right Honorable Speaker, and said that the earliest a commission meeting can sit is after 30th June. That's the letter you wrote back to me, right, Honorable Speaker. 30th June is over six months away from today, and these issues continue to pile up. And that's why I was saying, as a people-centered parliament, it's important. Uh, because the commission, I'm told, last started in August of last year. So that will actually have been about a year. That's why I was saying that as a people-centered parliament, is it not Hon prudent Honorable that members, we respond to these issues, listen, right, Honorable first Speaker? First listen, first listen. The commission sat... And these are things that are not supposed to be discussed in this house. The commission is sat because you members were complaining of your fuel. Your fuel. And that is the commission which is sat to make sure that there was an approval of the fuel for members at the expense of taxpayers. At the expense of taxpayers. Yes, procedure. There's a procedure matter. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, pursuant to Rule 87, Sub Rule 2, of our rules of procedure, members have been heard and you've taken a decision and that we shall proceed with the matters of the House and have substantive contributions, whether matters of national importance, ETC that we also have as members, later on, and that's why we are here. Right, Honorable Speaker, our rules clearly state that the decision of the Speaker or chairperson on any point shall not be open to appeal and shall not be reviewed by the House, except upon substantive motion. And you've ruled. Your ruling... Unless through a motion, and it's true, 
she has ruled on the matter of procedure that was raised by a member and clearly stated that let's proceed with the laying of the document. Then we can move to move. No, the issue of the Honorable, is Honorable up, Sechkubo. And, and, your, and, your, and your ruling cannot be reviewed by, the, by this Honorable House. Sechkubo. It can only be reviewed by a motion. Honorable Sechkubo. I have not I have speak. not given you the, the, the mic. Further procedure. I speak. have not given you the mic. Further procedure. Retro. Honorable Sechkubo, I want to refer you to Rule 89. I don't think you should test somebody's patience for too long. Listen, just a minute. There is a procedure matter. Further procedure. There is a procedure matter. Sarah. 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 To have audience. What's wrong with you? I deserve. Right honorable stand. Right honorable speaker. I was the first. Yes, Sarah. Stand, right honorable speaker. Sarah. Sarah. You see it, you will speak after Sarah. Thank you, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, I rise on a procedure issue. We all have issues that we want to raise, right honorable speaker, regarding the commission and the commissioners specifically. There are issues, for example, on the pay of the commissioners. Forget about the service award. Because what is also coming up is that other than the allowance that this parliament gave the commissioners, there is payment for servants I thought that is what yes. is going to be discussed. So, right honorable speaker, 4.8 million, 12 million for fuel. Right honorable speaker, the procedure issue that I'm raising is whether we should not go ahead to lay the papers and then have time to discuss what we want to discuss. Yes, that's what so I'm right saying. So, right honorable speaker, is it not procedure right that you call on the ministerial policy statements to be laid Let's lay and the then papers. we discuss the other matters after? Thank you, right honorable speaker. Next item. Uh, you, you, search Kubo, you see, you talk whatever you want to talk. Talk. I'm saying you speak. Speak. Right Honorable Speaker. You speak. Right, right Honorable Speaker. I'm not a member of the Parliamentary Commission. Where you are insinuating that you can have matters of such public importance debated in there. Right Honorable Speaker and members. Where I stand as MP, this house has been engulfed in totally, totally unprecedented abuse. Right, Honorable Speaker. You say we debate other things, we lay the papers, when the credibility of this house yeah. is under challenge. Right, Honorable Speaker. He's we are having procedure. a big problem. He's on we, we cannot sit here as if nothing wrong has happened. I was amazed that in your communication you did not make a mention of the grave allegations against the institution of parliament where I belong as a member. I'm here as a member of parliament. And once this house is tarnished the way it is, I can't sit comfortably there. And we say we move on to other items. Can we have a clarification about the allegations in the media so that we take a corrective position, so that we come, we clean ourselves first. We are here to perform Article 79 of the Constitution, the oversight function. We are taking oversight role on other institutions and arms of government. But when it comes to us, we want to hide it under carpet. And it is a shame to this House if we proceed when such allegations are on our head and we continue as if it is business as normal, as usual. Okay. I therefore beseech you, Right Honorable Speaker, I beg your indulgence under Rule 59, K and even OM, so that you allow these matters. You would, have, you would even have issued a statement 
if you had issued a statement at that point, we would say yes. But to proceed as if nothing has happened, we go to the next item. And yet, the only issue I have on my life is a member of this house. Thank and once you. this house is on fire, I cannot sit down there. We need answers. What happened? Right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable members. What okay. happened? Sit and I give you an what answer. What happened? Sit, I give you an answer. Sit and I give you an answer. Honorable members, I will never, and I'm, resp I'm saying, never give you an answer on hearsay, on rumor mongering. And we are not going to run this house on rumor mongering. I just saw yesterday where they said the uh, Honorable Okini Ki Pipi was dealing on uh, cocaine. Okini Pipi is here. Which cocaine is the guy dealing on? Me to answer you on hearsay, on the things that you have cooked on the social media, because I have said no to bum shafting. I will not. Next item. Next item. item. Item three, laying of papers. 3A, ministerial policy statements That's and budget what? estimates. That's for the financial year 2024-2025. Honorable Member, Section 12 of the Public Finance Management Act, 2015 mandates Parliament to analyze government policies that affect the economy and recommendation of alternative policies. Section 13, 13 of the Public Finance Management Act requires relevant ministers and their ministerial policy statements by 15th day of March. Min Honorable Minister, you listen. Today being the deadline, I will require the ministerial policy statements to be tabled on for onward transmission to the relevant sectoral committees. As sectoral committees embark on consideration of ministerial statements, I urge them to evaluate the compliance of policy statements under Section 1315 of the Public Finance Management Act. Section 20 of, 2020 of 2015, which prescribes the nature of information and documents to accompany the policy statements. In addition, the opposition is required under Rule 147 of the Rules of Procedure to submit an alternative policy proposals by 29th of March 2024 for onward transmission of sectoral committees. However, I am reliably informed that the Shadow Cabinet Minister of Finance has actually, ha actually has his report ready and will also lay it on the table today. He has the report ready. He's a very effective person, so he's going to lay it on the table. And that is with the consultation with this leader of opposition. I'll, I'll, I'll grant the shadow minister permission. Let me finish. I'll grant the shadow minister, if that is okay with the leader of opposition and the house, for him to lay it on the table. And I will also expect all the other ministerial statements to be presented to the budget committee and be brought back to the House. The Budget Committee will report back to the House. I now invite the Minister of Foreign Affairs to lay the ministerial policy statement. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay on table 
the Ministerial Policy Statements for Vote 006 and Votes 501 to 538 for financial year 2024-2025 under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I beg to lay. Pursuant to Rule 146 of the Rules of Procedure, the Minister Policy Statement for Foreign Affairs stands the referred to the Sectoral Committee of Foreign Affairs. Three two, the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. Right Honorable Speaker, I hereby lay the ministerial statement and budget, budget, budget estimates for the financial year 2024-2026. Twenty twenty five. Honorable members, that is for <laughs> for the Minister of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. <laughs> this is referred to the Committee of uh, Tourism, Trade and Industry. As per rule one forty six three. Namuga, why don't you leave the old man? <laughs> A minister of gender. Uh, Helen, you can read from there. Honorable Sechikubo, you help Helen to bring the document. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Sechikubo is a very good friend. He knows what we deal with the age limit. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, pursuant to Section 13 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015, as amended and Rule 146 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I hereby submit the Ministerial Policy Statements for Vote 18 and 615, Minister of Gender, Labor and Children Development, Financial Year 2024-2025. I beg to submit. Thank you. Honorable Sechkubo, can you help Honorable me and put Sechkubo, this? Honorable can you bring for us? Thank you so much. Mm. And clap for him, he's my good friend. Honorable pursuant to Rule 1463 of the Rules of Procedure, the ministerial statement will be referred to the Committee of Gender, Labor, and Social Development. Honorable Sechi, thank you. Office of the Prime Minister. I beg to lay on table the ministerial policy statement, financial 2024 stroke 2025, vote 003, Office of the Prime Minister. I beg to lay. Thank you. Under Rule 1463, it's referred to the Committee of Presidential Affairs. Thank you. Uh, Office of the President. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to read the Ministerial Policy Statement for the Presidency Financial Year 2024-25 for the following votes, 001 Office of the President, 002 State House, 023 Ministry of Kampala Capital City and Metro Metropolitan Affairs, vote 107 Uganda AIDS Commission, vote 112 Directorate of Ethics and Integrity, Vote 158, Internal Security Organization, and Vote 159, 
external security organization. I beg to rest. Thank you. This is referred to the committee still of presidential affairs. Uh, East African Community Affairs. Right Honorable Speaker, I hereby present to you the Ministerial Policy Statement and Expenditure Proposals for the Ministry of East African Community Affairs, Vote 021 for Financial Year 2024, that is Stroke 25, for, cons for consideration and approval. I beg to lay. Thank you, Pastor Antoine 1463. You first clap for the old man now. I fumbled along. This stands referred to the Committee of, of uh, East African Community Affairs. Trade, uh, Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. Right, Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable Members, I beg to lay the Ministerial Policy Statement for the financial year 2024-2025 for votes 022 and 117, Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. Thank you. This, ref this is referred to the Sectoral Committee of Tourism, Trade and Industry. Local government. Right Honorable Speaker, in accordance with Section 13 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 and Rule 146 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I beg to lay the ministerial policy statement for financial year 24-25 for votes 1011 Ministry of Local Government, vote 146 of Local Government Finance Commission, and vote 601-935 <coughs> of all local governments in Uganda. On behalf of the Ministry of Local Government, I beg to lay. Thank you. Pursuant to Rule 1463, referred to the Committee of Public Service and Local Government. Defense and Veteran Affairs. Right, Honorable Speaker, under delegation, I wish to lay on table the Ministerial Policy Statement of the Minister of Defense and Veteran Affairs, Vote 004 of Financial Year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Pursuant to Rule 146, there refer to the Committee of Defense and Internal Affairs, Public Service. <coughs> right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the Ministerial Policy Statement, Ministry of Public Service, Vote 005 
for the financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Public Service and Local Government. That's pass one to rule 146.3 of the Rules of Procedure. Minister of Water and Environment. Water and Environment. Right Honorable Speaker, under delegation, I beg to read the ministerial policy statement for the Ministry of Water and Environment, Financial 2024-25. I beg to read. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Environment and Natural Resources, Pass one to Rule 143, one, 146 three of the Rules of Procedure, Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Madam Speaker, I beg to lay a ministerial policy statement for Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Pursuant to Rule 146.3, refer to the Committee of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. Agriculture, animal industry and fisheries. Right Honourable Speaker, in accordance with section thirteen, subsection thirteen of the Public Finance Management Act two thousand and fifteen and rule one forty six of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament. I beg to lay on table the ministerial policy statement for financial year 24-25 for, for the following votes. 010, MAIF headquarters. 121, Direct Development Authority. 125, National, uh, National Animal Genetic Resources and Data Bank. 142, National Agriculture Research Organization. 152, National Agriculture Advisory Services. 155, Cotton Development Organization. 160, Uganda Coffee Development Authority. 601, Local Government. I beg to move. I beg to leave. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Agriculture and More Industry and Fisheries. Pass one to roll 146.3. Uh, the ins Inspectorate of Government, IG. Right on, right on our speaker and honorable members, I beg to lay the policy statement for the Inspectorate of Government, vote 103. 2024 2025 I beg to lay I refer to the committee of League legal and parliamentary affairs health right honorable speaker I beg to lay the ministerial policy statement of the health sub-program for the financial year 2024-2025 for consideration and approval in accordance with section 13, subsection 13 of the Public Finance and Management Act 2015 as amended. I beg to lay. Thank you. Uh, refer to the Committee of Health. Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Mm. 
Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay Ministerial Policy Statement for Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development under vote 008. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. But there are other votes uh, under the finance. The National Population Council. Right when I was speaker, I beg to lay on table the ministerial policy statement for the National Population Council, vote 149 for the financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Planning, Finance, the Planning and Economic Development. The Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Finance. Right when I was speaker. I beg to lay on table the Ministry of po Policy Statement for the Uganda Bureau of Statistics, uh, vote 143 for the financial year 2024-2025. Refer to the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. The National Planning Authority. Uh, right on our speaker, I beg to lay on table the Ministry of Policy Statement for the National Planning Authority vote 108 for the financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. The Parliamentary Commission. Parliamentary Commission. Right now, Speaker, and don't know members, I beg to lay the Ministerial Policy Statement Vote 104, Parliamentary Commission, Financial Year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Refer to the Committee of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, Education. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay on table the Ministerial Policy Statement for the Ministry of Education and Sports, Financial Year 2024-2025, for vote 13, vote 111, National Council of National Cultural Development Center, vote 128, Uganda National Examinations Board, vote 132, Education Service Commission, vote 164, National Council for Higher Education, vote 165, Uganda Business and Technical Examinations Board, vote 166, National Council of Sports, vote 301, Makere University, vote 302, Mbarara University, Vote 304, Chambogo University. Vote 305, Bositema University. Vote 306, Muni University. Vote 307, Kabale University. Vote 308, Soroti University. Vote 309, Guru University. Vote 310, Lila University. Vote 312, Uganda Management Institute. Vote 313, Mountains of the Moon University. Vote 612, Local Government. I beg to submit. I beg to lay. The, the ministerial statements stand referred to the Committee of Education and Sports. They're asking you about Bunyoro University. Maybe, maybe you'll say something about uh, Bunyoro University later. 
after this. Let's let's get. He's going to say something. Uh, science, technology, and innovation. Yes. Right honourable speaker, still under delegation, I beg to lay the ministerial policy statement for science, technology, and innovation for financial year 2024-25 for the following votes. Vote 167, Science, Technology, and Innovation Secretariat. Vote 110, Uganda Industrial Research Institute. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of S Sectoral Committee on Presidential Affairs. Auditor General. Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Members, I beg to lay the Ministerial Policy Statement for Financial Year 2024-2025, Vote 131 an for order. the Office of the Auditor General. On yes. order. Yes, Right Honourable Speaker, thank you so much. Yes. Right Honourable Speaker, raised on the point of order, passed to Rule 88, where you must have order in the House, is Madam. Is Honorable Justin Lumumba in order to, 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 to come and disorganize the house in that manner? Honorable Justin, since those people are disturbing you, come back to the front bench. You, you, you sit in here, Honorable Govi. Ah, ah. Omara, you leave, you leave the minister. You want to put on shoes which are bigger than yours. <laughs> you see, when you start bringing those things, you even disorganize. We don't even know where we are now. <laughs> Minister of ICT and National Guidance. Hey, Auditor General. Right on our speaker, Sorry. I beg to lay the Ministerial Policy Statement for financial year 2024-2025, Office of the Auditor General. Vote 131. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Legal and Parliamentary. ICT and National Guidance. Hey, Auditor General is for finance. Sorry. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I beg to lay the Ministerial Policy Statement Financial Year 2024-25 covering votes 020, Ministry of Information, Communications Technology and National Guidance, and vote 126, National Information Technology Authority, Uganda, NITAYU. I beg to move and submit, right to the speaker. Thank you, refer to the committee, sectoral committee of ICT. Thank you. The Ministry of Internal Affairs. Internal Affairs. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, I beg to lay on the table the Ministerial Policy Statement for the Minister of Internal Affairs for Financial 2024-25, comprising Vote 009, Minister of Internal Affairs Headquarters, Vote 120, National Citizenship and Immigration Control, Vote 135, DIGAL, Vote 137, NIRA, Vote 144, Uganda Police Force, 
and vote 145 Uganda Prison Service. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Defense and Internal Affairs. The Ministry. Also under rule 1463. The Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. Minister of Lands. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay on table the ministerial statement for Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development covering votes 012 and vote 156 for financial year 2024-2025. I beg today. Thank you. Refer to the Sector Committee of Fiscal Infrastructure. Pass one to roll 1463. Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. Honorable Minister. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I beg to lay the Minister of Energy and Mineral Development financial year 2024-25 ministerial policy statement and draft budget estimates for votes uh, 017, Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development, and 139, Petroleum Authority of Uganda. I submit, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Uh, it is referred to the Committee of Environment and Natural Resources, pursuant to Rule 146.3 of the Rules of Procedure. Ministry of Works and Transport. Right, Honorable Speaker and members, I beg to lay on the table. The Ministerial Policy Statement for the Minister of Works, Vote 106, Minister of Works, Vote 113, UNRWA, Vote 118, Uganda Road Fund, and Vote 609, Local Government. I beg to read. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Fiscal Infrastructure as for the rules. The Public Service Commission. Right Honourable Speaker, <coughs> I beg today the Ministerial Policy Statement for the financial year 2024-2025, vote 146, Public Service Commission, I beg today. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Public Service and Local Government, pursuant to the rules. The Uganda Free Zones Authority. Right Honourable Speaker, I beg to lay on the table the Ministerial Policy Statement for the Uganda Free Zones Authority, Vote 161, for the financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Referred to the Committee of Finance, pursuant to the rules. Kampala Capital City Authority. Kampala City Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the Kampala Capital State Authority Ministry of Policy Statement of Financial Year 2024-2025 uh, for Vote 122, Kampala Capital State Authority, I beg to lay. Thank you. This is referred to the Committee of Presidential Affairs, as one to Rule 146.3 of the Rules of Procedure. Uh, and as we had said, the alternative policy statement, and LOP, I think, has something to say. 
Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. As uh, you did stipulate in your communication that um, we shall lay by 20th. By uh, 25th. By 25th. Actually, you mentioned 29th, Right Honorable Speaker, but by 25th. Uh, we have worked around the clock. We are ready in many respects. Uh, we are going to cross every T and dot every I. And uh, by the time prescribed within the law, we shall be ready. So we thought we'll not pick that up right now. But as you had guided, right, Honorable Speaker, that after laying of the ministerial policy statements, we then get to discuss issues of accountability by this House. So that's why we thought we'll deal with the other issue within the laws so that we proceed as you had guided, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Can we first have the uh, Honorable Minister? Laying of papers on tax exemptions. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay on table a request for tax waiver of tax arrears for MS J2E Investment Corporation Limited. I beg to lay. Madam Speaker, I also beg to lay on table a request for approval of of waiver for tax arrears for Makerere Business Institute Limited pursuant section 40 of the Tax Procedures Code Act. I beg to read. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay on the table the request for approval to remit taxes pursuant section 40 of the Tax Procedures Code Act. I beg to lay. Thank I, you. Lastly, I beg to lay a request for approval of waiver for tax arrears of Kumba University pursuant section 40 of the Tax Procedures Co Code Act. I beg to lay, Madam. Thank you. I refer the proposal from Minister of Finance, Planning and, Econo and Economic Development to the Committee of Finance for examination and report back to the House on 28th. Motion that the House resolves itself into a committee of supply to move funds appropriated under supplementary schedule number one for the financial year 2023-2024 uh, from vote 013, uh, Minister of Education and Sports, to vote 166, the National Council of Sports. Madam Speaker. I beg to move a motion for a resolution of Parliament to amend a resolution of Parliament on the supplemental expenditure schedule number one for the financial year 2023-2024. I beg to move. Is it seconded? Seconded by Omara Solomon, Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Education, NIJ, Linda, ICT, Chairperson ICT, <coughs> Xavier, Dr. Katesh, Angora, Nathan, S Isaiah, thank you. Speak to your motion. Madam Speaker, Whereas on 12 December 2023, under supplemental expenditure schedule number one for financial year 2023-2024, Parliament approved Uganda shillings 1 trillion, 932 billion, 230 million, 782,760 as recurrent supplemental expenditure and Uganda shillings, one trillion five hundred and sixty billion six hundred and ninety three million five hundred sixty sixty one thousand 
as development supplemental expenditure, noting, however, that during the appropriation process, a total of Uganda shillings 84 billion, 920 million, 466,785 was appropriated to vote, one th vote 13, Ministry of Education and its posts. A total of 23 billion Uganda shillings was meant for vote 166 National Council for Sports and realizing that there is urgent need to correct the anomaly in paragraph 2 above, I now therefore beg to move that this House resolves itself into a committee of supply to amend its, resolu its resolution dated the 12th December 2023 in respect of votes 166 and vote 013. 013. I beg to move, Madam Speaker. Thank you. I now put a question that the House resolves itself into a committee of supply to move funds appropriated under supplementary expenditure schedule number one for financial year 2023-2024 from vote 013 of Minister of Education and Sports to vote 166 that is National Council of Sports. Those in favor sign the control and air. The eyes have it. The Committee of Supply. Vote 166. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that a total of 23 billion be moved from vote one th vote zero one three Ministry of Education and Sports to vote one six six National Council for Sports. I I beg to move. Madam Chair, on the twelfth of December last year, this house pronounced itself on this supplementary expenditure and right now the minister is moving to transfer 23 billion from Ministry of Education without giving a justification and we don't have copies and we are at a loss we don't so that this parliament can agree or disagree or determine in one way or the other we are we are giving it as a rubber stamp right now yeah. Uh, uh, Minister. Madam Chair, as I justified in the motion, under supplementary schedule one, we provided for 23 billion meant for an activity under National Council for Sports. This was an anomaly it was by error, and what I'm just seeking now is, is Parliament to allow me collect this error and these funds move to the appropriate vote, which is the National Council for Sports. No addition, no, no, no subtraction. It is, I'm not seeking for new money. I'm just seeking for authority to be allowed to move money from the wrong vote to the right vote. Oh, what he says, he wants a justification. What is the money meant for? Isn't that what you say, Sergeant? Madam Chair, 
he has said that it is an error. But I take it that he misled Parliament. And we cannot sit by and just allow you without apologizing to this new house. Because if we sit and pass, now you call us the following day, you say, now I'm changing my mind. Your error does not constitute the Parliament's error. You, you should seek formally to say you are sorry for one reason or the other. You are misled, but not take us on your bandwagon. We need an apology right to the chair. Honorable Minister. Honorable, honorable members, I want to remind you that we passed a, a sports act here. And when we passed a sports act, there was money under the supplemental budget that was provided for in that budget for infrastructure in Kampala. Remember, we are going to host Jan in Kampala here and Afcon. So maybe the minister can now continue from there. Uh, let me g let's get from the minister. Madam, mad he wants to give you a clarification. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, thank you very much. While I appreciate the intention of the money being shifted, I want to be convinced by the minister that uh, he presented a policy statement to the session of the committee. Session of the committee reported to the budget committee. Budget committee reported to this house, and the house approved. So when the minister alludes to the issue that there was an error, it is an indictment on this house. The process of budgeting under Article 90 is that the, 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 the sectoral committee handled the matter. It reported to the budget committee. Budget committee reported to this house. So when the minister makes a statement that it was an error by the, the, the government or whoever, it is an indictment on the committees and this house. I it want is, to be clarified. It is not an indictment in the committee. So we approved an the error. The formulation of, of the budget is by executive, not ours. Okay, not so an the cabinet made an error? The session of committee made so an error. So they are making a correction because there was an so error. So we deserve an apology from him. <laughs> he will come and apologize to you in Kisoro. <laughs> Madam Chair, I will recall, and this House should have the record, that this particular appropriation in supplementary on that day happened at the last moment when we were in this house. I and several colleagues sought to get clarification and it was not allowed. I want to repeat so that you follow that this particular appropriation, when we processed the supplementary, the minister did by a casual letter and it was brought here and the Madam Speaker even put on the record, it was never part of the schedule that was brought to this house. You just bypassed and crossed casually and uh, submitted that now you're alt alternating it. And we sought to question at that time because it was not processed. Even the sectoral committee did not actually process that. And now you have come and you are saying it was done in error. Madam Speaker, this could be a very serious matter that the Ministry of Finance casually thinks they can uh, first hide some money and then later he comes and said, this is an error and needs to be corrected. Madam Speaker, even the procedure for passing the supplementaries and budgets is that we are appropriate to votes. And I've levered before to say that those votes are actually equivalent to clauses that we are actually passing a law. And when you want to amend the law, it's which is what you are doing, you come here through a bill. If you want to amend any clause of a law, because we have already passed it, this vote, it is already a law that should be implemented. And now you want to amend it here, and you have just come casually as it is. It shouldn't be that way. So I wanted to raise this matter to you, Madam Speaker. First of all, I agree that this minister must not take this house for granted, like he does always. We have forgiven him so many times, 
and he has now taken this house for granted. He thinks he can just walk and do his things and get away. The law is there and it must be implemented. And it is you, Madam Speaker, who should ensure that these laws are actually followed. So may this minister then be sent back to go and follow the correct procedure. This house will not go anywhere. We shall entertain you and follow the due process and reallocate the money as and when you have proposed. Honorable Jonathan, the ministerial letter is not just a casual letter. <laughs> it is not a casual letter. It's an official letter. So what can only be corrected is an official letter. It is an official letter. It is not just casual. Written to the speaker, so and it was laid on table. There was nothing done casually. Madam Speaker, I was inviting you to help this law, this house, follow the due processes of the law. No, but in what I'm law, saying, the, the law, letter was no, not casual. There is no provision that when you want to appropriate, you write to the speaker. It is not there. And it, I was can't laid on the, it was laid on even the, the laying, table. Even the laying, Madam Speaker, I'm just insisting. So can you, can you guide us on the best procedure now on how we can have this corrected under uh, Article 193? Madam Speaker, I did mention that uh, when we are appropriating, it must come through a bill proposed by the executive. When the bill comes here, all the votes in those bills, as we see, vote 010 ETC, are equivalent to clauses when in the lawmaking process. An appropriation results into an appropriation act, including the supplementaries that have been mentioned. So when you want to amend any law that is in existence, passed already by this house, you can only do that through a bill proposed by the executive. And I have asked him that the correct procedure would be for him to go back and bring a bill to amend the appropriation act, which we did, and therefore this house will then entertain and follow the procedures of an enactment. That's what I wanted to submit. It's not that we are rejecting, yes. but... Uh, you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, Honorable Odur is correct on the principle. <laughs> yes. However, Madam Chair, I am seeking for Parliament to approve a schedule. At the end of the financial year, I will consolidate all of these schedules into a bill and I will bring the supplementary appropriations bill to the House. Yes. Yes, that's how we normally do it. Rugoros, would you like to come and support me? <laughs>
Don't make mistakes. Do the right thing. Don't do the right thing. Madam Speaker. <laughs> you know, you know, Odur is saying before I put a question, <laughs> I think he knows I'm putting a question. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've been long enough here, you know. Madam Speaker, in, in, in this case now, we don't want also to send information that has not been validated by the executive. Can the minister then now confirm? Because I've had names of Akibua, we have had names of this. Can you now confirm? That this is for Akibua. That this money is going to go for A, B, C, D on the record, so that... The house can now get convinced. So we want to see if it's a kibua, you tell us how much will go to a kibua and for what purpose. Because for, for the record. No, China and Africa. Madam Chair. Honorable members. Oh, oh, Omar. Madam Chair. The particulars were very clear. In the supplemental. No, you just part. say. I Afcon, say. Afcon and Chan. This money is going to finance activities under Afcon and Chan. Honorable members. Honorable members. Where is the Minister of Edu uh, Education? Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Under AFCON, we are expected to prepare quite a number of playing grounds. And, and uh, these are quite a number. I don't have them on my fingertips. <laughs> Honorable members. Honorable members, I have uh, the president of FUFA who knows the, the, the playing grounds. The stadiums that I know are uh, uh, Akibwa and uh, Hoima. And Hoima. Akibwa has already been visited the, by, by the contractors. The, 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 the contract is already being made by AG. So we want to know which places are going to be worked on locally. Can we hear? <laughs> right on our speaker and colleagues. There are two activities which are intertwined. For us to be able to host to be granted the rights to host the Africa Cup of Nations in 2027, the regulations of CAF require that you should have hosted another competition before. And for us to be able to be granted, we also accepted to host CHAN. CHAN is a different competition, and that is coming in 2024, in September. So for us to be able to host that competition, again, the three countries, we needed resources to prepare the hosting. And Chan, our plan is to host it in only one stadium, and that is Mandela National Stadium. And that's what these resources are meant to prepare for Chan. And then the Afghan costs that have been included in this is simply preparation. Just this weekend, we received the inspection team, and these expenses are already going on that actually we expected to receive the resources in about December. But up to today, expenses are going on. Inspection teams are flying in and out in preparation of the main team that is going to come and sign a contract with us to host AFCON 2027. So we're already running late. But these are not the resources to construct the stadiums. These are resources to prepare. And if we don't do it now, we run a danger of losing the rights to host the Africa Cup of Nations. I beg. Honorable members, I put a question that a total sum. Eh, eh. Boss, first seat. 
facet. You've understood what, what you wanted to understand. And, and you have the policy statement. Look at the policy statements. Thank you very much, Honorable, no. speak, right, Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Chair, our colleague, the Honorable Member, has given us uh, an account of what is going to be done with that money. But in this committee, we have the political heads responsible for spending that money. They've made no comment to acknowledge whether what he says is actually what they are politically responsible for or what they are going to do. So I'm worried that this money is going to become loose money. And being loose money, it can be even shared. So, right honorable speaker, let the political heads acknowledge what we've just heard. Uh, uh, please do. Right honorable, right honorable speaker and dear colleagues, I do accept that whatever my colleague friend here has said <laughs> is acceptable to us. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Honorable members, I put a question that a sum of Uganda shillings, 23 billion, be moved from vote 1013, Minister of Education and Sports, to vote 166, National Council of Sports. Those in favor say on the contrary, nay. The eyes have it. Motion for resumption of the House. I get surprised when I hear Sinas saying no, when Hoima is one of the beneficiaries. <laughs> Minister. Madam Chair, I beg to move that the House do resume and the Committee of the Whole House reports there too. Honorable members, I put a question that the House does resume and the committee of the whole House reports there too. Those in favor say on the contrary, nay. The eyes have it. Report of the Committee of Supply. Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, I beg to report that the Committee of the Whole House has considered a motion for a resolution of Parliament on the supplementary schedule number one for financial year 2023-2024 and moved an amount of Uganda shillings 23 billion from vote 013 Ministry of Education and Sports to vote 166 National Council of Sports. I beg to report. Thank you. Motion for adoption of the report of the Committee of Supply. Minister. Madam Speaker, I beg to move a motion that the report from the Committee of Supply be adopted. I put a question that the report of the Committee of Supply be adopted by this House. Those in favor say on the contrary. Nay. The eyes have it. Honorable members. As I said before, Yes. Right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Speaker, from what we have uh, just gone through now, there are clear signs that the country is uh, adequately gearing towards uh, the African Cup of Nation and the other games. Right, Honorable Speaker, it would be procedurally correct for the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Finance as we look at these facilities that will be, be built, to also begin to consider some of the areas that are near, for example, 
when you look at Akibwa in Lira, a stadium like Paja Stadium would be the best place to prepare uh, for the, the players as they would go for the tournament. Again, we have Gulo Airport. That would be the best place where the, 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 the players would fly in. And so we need to look at places and, like and Gulo. Sorotti, and Sorotti. Exactly. Places like Gulo, Soroti, Arua, and nearby places. And we need to invest and prepare those places. And so, right, Honorable Speaker, it would be procedurally correct for the ministry to put resources. You have, and you have already said, you have already given a response. To, to your procedure. But uh, the you, minister has something to say. Right, Honorable Speaker, I just wanted to give information to the Honorable Member that plans are underway to expand Gulu Airport and also do the road Kona Yel, Kona Boke, Kona Icheme to Bobi so that if uh, the team lands in, a, in a Gulu, then takes the shortcut to Lira. Yes, uh, Central. Uh, right, right, Honorable. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues. I think what uh, the Honorable Mapenduzi raises is a great matter for us to take notice of. Rather than the infrastructure based on roads and others, but also the sports infrastructure probably would use this opportunity not to only focus on the big stadia, but also what we call the regional feeder stadia, or even at district level. For example, creation of uh, better stadia, we can even talk of go for region in Kigezi and pick one in Kacheka. Then we pick on the divisions of Kampala each, where we have the highest concentration and the metropolitan Wakiso and Tebe municipality and use part of these funds to improve sports infrastructure. And if you came up with such a proposal, I can assure you, I don't think there is any member of this house that would decline to support you. Even in as much as we might not all come here to ask for big stadia, but the backup support infrastructure, training, not necessarily training grounds, but when we were in Rwanda for the recent East African Games, we had those mini stadia, the small ones, where, you, you know, at a regional level, which might not have a big capacity of over 3,000 people, over 5,000 people, but even if it was 2,000, well hoarded, but with changing rooms, and then we can improve. We can say that out of AFCON and CHAN, this is exactly what we got as benefit. Thank so we you. can have it in Ankole, in Ichigezi, regionally and in Kampala Thank Metropolitan at every division. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, honorable members, we missed out one ministerial statement. The Equal Opportunities Commission. Honorable Minister. Honorable Sechi. Helen is... Uh, Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker, and I want to apologize that the statement came in a bit late. Pursuant to Section 13 of the Pulp Finance Management Act 2015 and the, the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I move that the Ministerial Policy Statement Vote 124, Equal Opportunities Commission for the financial year 2024-2025, be laid. Tony, pick it. T Tony is I now beg to lay. Yeah, Tony. Thank Honorable Speaker, you. you are giving me my good friends only. Thank you. Th thank you. Referred to the Committee of Gender, Labor, and Social Development. And that's pass one to roll 146.30. Honorable, uh, Honorable Areko. Honorable Speaker. Madam Speaker, I was following up on a matter that my brother, Honorable Martin Ojara Mapenduzi, was raising. Madam Speaker, the Minister of Transport and Works uh, came up and gave us uh, a very good response in as far as Gulu uh, in terms of the airport and the road is concerned. Madam Speaker, 
Soroti Flying School, the East African School of Aviation, is probably one of the oldest aviation facilities other than Entebbe that we have. Madam Speaker, I would want to seek clarification from the minister that as we plan for this additional ones in other places in the country. What is the plan of the ministry in as far as ensuring that we harness the best possible use of Soroti Flying School, which has the second longest tarmac runway other than Entebbe in the country, which probably has some of the biggest aviation facilities and equipment in the country after Entebbe? Because I don't hear this. Number two, Mr. Minister, I know that you're looking at the visitors flying into Gulu. But as you know, Soroti is only one hour away from Lira. We would be glad for you to also tell us what you are thinking in terms of road infrastructure around this subregion. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I mean, Honorable Areko, Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable Areko, um, the issue of Soroti Flying School, if you don't recall, this was an East African facility. And we are still, uh, through the Minister of uh, East Africa, we are still fighting to get this facility under the, the government of Uganda. We are still negotiating with the other member countries, that is the original member countries of East Africa, that's Kenya and Tanzania, to let go of this facility so that the government can now invest in the facility knowing it's our facility. The negotiations are still ongoing and uh, we are waiting to see what, how, how far we'll go with this. So it's now very difficult for me even to get money from Minister of Finance to fully invest or get a vote for this uh, uh, school because it's not, we, are not, we are not owning it as a government. You mean Soroti is not owned as a government of Uganda? Clarification. The legal, the legal status of the Soroti Flying School is still a matter to be decided between East Africa and, and the government. Clarification. Madam Speaker. I, 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 I thought that is a matter of law. We can. Madam Speaker, I'm seeking clarification from the Honorable Minister. We have been investing in the Soroti Flying School. We even bought aircraft. President Museveni is the one promoting East African community. Can you clarify to this parliament the, your discussion to own? How does it stop you from investing money to host, uh, to allow the guests to use the facility to make it become better so that when President Museveni, the Speaker of Parliament with the MPs go to other countries, we can say this facility for East Africa, but Uganda is investing money and is a model that we desire for the East African cooperation. Can you clarify? Uh, and, and Honorable Minister, one thing you need to know that the land of Sorot Flying School is being encroached on. The land has been taken away. Yes. Madam Speaker, just before the minister comes. Now I see the whole of Soroti standing up. Yes. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister, I am happy that you said that at the moment the government of Uganda is not able to invest heavily on this school of aviation because it belongs to the former original East African community. Mr. Speaker, I, I would like to request the minister that as it, as it goes on to clarify on what the Honorable Kenya has raised, I would like you to also help me understand who at the moment pays the common cadre staff who work at this aviation school. For instance, the accountants, the administrators, the human resource officers, and so on. Number two, what about the technical staff? the engineers, the instructors, and the other pilots. If it is the government of Uganda, is this investment or not? Why then do you keep people paid without making the facility more economically viable? I thank you. 
information. Uh, another information from here. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I like the debate that is going on. But Madam Speaker, uh, while we congratulate the Ministry of the significant works that have been done at Entebbe International Airport, the debate is now talking about the airstrips. We are excited about the African Cup of Nations hosting those visitors. But Madam Speaker, on a daily basis, we have tourists coming into this country. So the debate should extend. If we are talking about airstrips, we have, for example, Kisoro airstrip. And Kisoro is a place where we get 60% of our tourist revenues because of the mountain gorillas. It is in a very poor state. Uh, some of the, the, the notices have been issued all the time being closed, opened. We have Kidepo. And we have others that serve the tourism industry. So, right Honorable Speaker, I would like to request that the Minister is given time to table a comprehensive report about the status of these airstrips and what is the strategic plan. Because we have seen directives by the President to, to, to rehabilitate some of these airstrips and we have not seen anything being done. So rather than have piecemeal cherry picking of one airstrip and, the, and leaving the others, let's have a comprehensive status so that we can debate. Because African Cup of Nations will come, they will go away. But the tourists are coming every day and we have airports and airstrips that have been neglected. I beg to submit. Honorable members, I am happy you are now talking about policy issues. And now you have ministerial policy statements. And this is the time for you to deliberate and include on those policy statements. So, Minister, you will have to put an, give an input on, on, on those things. And then you need to have a comprehensive statement on the whole country. Whereas we also want all the sectoral committees must report back in two weeks. Meaning, all members are going to be in sectoral committees. There will be no house sitting, but there will be committees sitting. Committees will be sitting, but the house will not be sitting for the next two weeks. That is up to 28th, considering the issue of the policy statements. So that on 28th, we'll be able to resume the house with the, a statement from leader of, uh, of opposition. That is the alternative policy statement. I now adjourn the house to 28th.
one on one with Michael Jordan Lukomwa. A weekly face to face conversation focusing on accountability, inspiration, information, and sensitization of the public from the various sources such as inspirational profiles. Having a disability is not inability. Professional guidance. There is no special antiretroviral uh, therapy that, that is given specifically for, for discordant what? A couple. And of course, politics. Don't you see anywhere that you would give a credit in the fight against COVID? My role as the owner of the country is not to, you know, be preoccupied by giving credit to my server. We have said that if we are to talk to uh, Genome 70, there must be certain conditions in place. Is it true that you paid 5 million shillings to MPs that voted for Anita Mong and Tayebo? That is laughable. Why would we pay when we have nominated them as SEC? The Tory party has been represented in Uganda's parliament for 10 years. We only By one MP, you yourself. And my daughter, Susan. <laughs> Every Friday 9 p.m. it's one on one with Michael Jordan Lukomwa on UBC TV inspiring Uganda